has taken the plunge into the sea of war. Her ships and planes have made their first attack. The new world situation thus created, British Paramount News passes in review. Four-fifths of the entire human race is now at war. Matching the cunning and insane recklessness of Hitler himself, Japan hurls the Far East and the United States into the fight between freedom and the forces of evil. The Tokyo militarists, out in the open as the real government of the country, compel the subservient diet to bow to their will. Dominating General Tojo's cabinet, the high command declared war. The administration chosen for that purpose has achieved the general's aim. At the height of their fighting power, the armed forces of the emperor strike at democracy. The embattled nations line up for the first time in history in what is truly a world war. America instantly rose to the challenge. As President Roosevelt drove to Congress, he was the head of a nation welded overnight into one united people. The joint session of Senate and representatives acclaimed him as even he has never been acclaimed before. No one throughout America had any doubt as to what course this great man would take. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. From opposite sides of the Pacific, the newest protagonists in the world conflict marshal their ships and planes. The greatest sea war in history is in preparation. Caught unprepared, Hawaii suffered 3,000 casualties in the first attack. Honolulu lay there like a bomber's paradise. In Pearl Harbor, U.S. men of war were severely damaged. Essential to U.S. naval war, Pearl Harbor is the strongest outpost in the world. Admiral Kimmel, Commander-in-Chief, U.S. Pacific Fleet, summoned reinforcements. Up to the minute equipment in workshop and defense positions fits Pearl Harbor for its all-important role. Unsuspected raiders were at large in the Pacific. Midway Island was bombed almost at the same time as Hawaii. Then Wake Island, another U.S. stronghold in the chain that passes through Guam and in its last link connects with the Philippines. All were bombed with, as America does not conceal, heavy losses. No more than Hawaii were the Philippines prepared. By swooping upon a foe as yet unaware even that he was at war, Japan caught the Americans with their ships in harbor, their men in bed, their planes on the ground. Inevitably, in such operations, the assailant has all the advantage, but when the surprise is sprung, it cannot be repeated. U.S. garrisons in the Pacific are now thoroughly on guard. Moreover, the world has no aggressor left to strike an unexpected blow. Japan sees the last chance. Effectively, a low-flying aircraft breaks the dumbfounded defense. Manila's underground ammunition stores were out of harm's reach. The giant shells are still there to feed the coastal guns. Singapore, Malaya, Thailand, Indochina and Hong Kong, all relatively near Japan, are scheduled for direct military attack. Singapore, Britain's coveted stronghold, is the deepest thorn in Japan's flesh. Of highest commercial and strategic importance, its capture would be the white man's notice to quit in the Far East. Here, emphatically, democracy is prepared. Even the native population knows, as we do, how to behave in air raids. The biggest graving dock and floating dock in this part of the world helped to make Singapore the complete naval base. Extremely welcome on his recent arrival was General Wavell on a visit to discuss and advise on defense plans. Resourceful and imperturbable, he is a match for the new enemy. The Commander-in-Chief, Far East, is Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, the only airman to have the other services included in his command. He has had more than 12 months in which to garrison and perfect the defenses of Singapore. And as Japanese have landed on the Malayan Peninsula, the home and imperial regiments at Sir Robert's disposal have already met the enemy in fierce fighting. Long trained to warfare in the Malayan swamps, the British at Singapore should hold the advantage. The RAF has yet to meet its fighting equal anywhere, 
It does not expect to encounter it in this theater of war. Indochina, for months past, and with the connivance of Vichy, has been in Japanese hands. For the arrogant yellow sub-man, it is the jumping off place for wider conquests. Thailand marked down to be the first victim. Seaborne Japanese troops landed in Thailand near the Malayan border. More regiments crossed the frontier from Indochina. Faced by overwhelming odds, Thailand was forced to sue for peace within four hours of the first attack. She grants Japan's troops uncontested passage through her territory to Malaya. The fate of Hong Kong, it is too early to prophesy. Its defense will not be easy, but in any event, Singapore has displaced Hong Kong as the essential naval base in this part of the world. Nevertheless, what Britain has, Britain holds, or knows the reason why. A volunteer corps now supplements the regular garrison, and Hong Kong will give good account of itself in more ways than one. The United States of America are united as never before. Geography puts upon them the greatest burden in this war with Japan. In a flash, they have leapt to arms, swept isolationism from the field of politics, and as one man entered the world war. Theirs potentially, and before long actually, is the greatest air force in the world. If from now on they can send fewer planes to us and to the Soviet, increased British production must make up the loss. American industry now has the stimulus of war to gear it up to production on a scale unequaled by any other country. Aircraft will come from the factories in unimagined numbers. Tanks will flow from the production lines in quantities which even Lord Beaverbrook would be satisfied. In the American Navy, Japan has challenged an invincible fleet. War in the Pacific is an affair of enormous distances. In that ocean, the aircraft carrier comes into its own, an indispensable factor in launching air attack on a foe thousands of miles from your own base. And in aircraft carriers, America holds a big advantage. The US Navy will not underrate its foe, but on balance, Japan's entry into the war should be to our advantage. American war potential vastly exceeds hers. At last, the two opposing ideologies in this world struggle line up fully represented. Inspired by Russian heroism and the leadership of Churchill and Roosevelt, we free peoples will fight till righteous peace brings back its blessings to the world. the end that government of the people, and thus, not for aggression, not for war, but for the assurance of peace, America sets out to become the mightiest force the world has ever known. By the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.